Hello, and welcome to another installment of Wiremog Essentials. In this episode, we optimize our weapon systems in that we'll be taking the operator completely off the battlefield. We'll be doing this by creating a remotely controlled tank. Over here I've arranged the props that we'll be using in the construction of said tank. The wheels and the beams that will be used for the cannon. Okay, first we're going to apply the cannon to the body of the tank. Seen there. So what we're going to need to do is get out the easy precision tool and select move first prop to second. No offset is necessary. Go ahead and place it there. Okay. Now notice it was not welded. Now, get out the Easy Precision Axis tool and select the sides of the two smaller beams. These will be the hinges that will hold the rotating cannon on the base while giving it the freedom of rotation. Okay, now apply the other one to the other side. And since, we, and since we want this cannon bill to rotate without the rest of these rotating with it, we're going to weld them to the base of the tank, like so. We will not weld the cannon, because we want to make sure that it has the freedom of rotation, like so. Alright, now that we have achieved this, we'll need to apply thrusters for propulsion and steering. So let's get out the wire thruster tool, with approximately 8500 force, in my case because of the weight of the body. This will differ depending on how heavy or how big your tank is. Okay, now I'm going to apply these at the corner, so that they have the most effect when they're steering. Like so. and then one on the back for forward and backward propulsion. Alright, now we're going to need to add the wheels. These particular wheels can be found in transportation props under the name Large Magnetic Base. Okay, we're going to access these wheels to the base with all settings zero. So no torque, no brake, and no friction. Go ahead and place these on the other side. And there we go. Now these wheels are too light. If a wheel is too light, it will not be able to support the body it's trying to hold. So, get out the weight tool, and in my case, I'm going to start at the 200. As you can see, most of the body is above 100. So 200 will be a good weight for this distributing the mass throughout the wheels. Okay, now, the last thing we need to do to physically build the tank is apply a wire hydraulic. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to position ourselves under the beam here. And right click. But, when you do it, you're not going to miss. So let's try that again. Right clicking draws a line straight across until it hits something. And then left click to place the hydraulic controller. Okay, now that we have the tank completely physically built, let's get to wiring. First thing we're going to do, once I have the tank in place, is we're going to place an advanced pod controller, as every vehicle needs one. Place it there, and then right click it, and right click the seat to link it. But of course, you all knew that. Okay, now the first gate we're going to need is a gate arithmetic subtract. As we learned in the first tutorial for WASD controlled vehicles, this will output 1 when W is being pressed and output negative 1 when S is being pressed. So let's wire it accordingly. 
get out your wire tool and wire A for the subtract to the output W and then B from the subtract to output S. Like so. Now that we have that done, let's wire A from the thruster to the subtract gate so that it sees the value 1 or negative 1 and applies force accordingly. Now for the steering. In this situation, it's easier to imagine which thruster goes to which output when you're standing behind it. But to make it even easier on you guys, I'll show you. Alright, now that we have those values in mind, let's go ahead and wire the thrusters that way. The one on the left back goes to A. The one on the back right goes to D. And the one on the front left also goes to D. And the one on the front right goes to A. Let's try this. Nice responsive motion in all four directions. Alright, now our primary focus after finishing with the thrusters is rising and lowering this beam, like so, so that we can attack targets at different altitudes. To achieve this, the first thing we're going to need to place is a timer gate, found under gate timer. Actually, we're going to need to place two of them. For future reference, press one above the other. Next, we're going to need to find an add gate, found in gate arithmetic, and then place this on the board. And then right next to that, in the same category, find increment decrement. Then finally, we're going to need a constant value. The two values are 4 and 0 0.5. Make sure to set the drop down menu to number. Now the reason the value is 4 is because the default length of this hydraulic is 4.3. And 4 is pretty close. That way it defaults back to that value. I'll go ahead and explain the 0 0.5 when we come to that. Alright, now we have all the components placed. If you missed any of that, here's a list for you to refer to. Pause if you need more time. First thing we're going to wire is A from the add to the constant value of 4. Next, we're going to wire B from the same add to the increment decrement gate. Next, wire A from the increment decrement to the value of 0 0.5. This is how much it will increment and decrement when it's told to do so. Now, wire increment to the top timer and decrement to the bottom timer. Now, in my case, I want the bar to raise when I press mouse 1. So, wire run from the top timer to output of mouse 1. And then, wire run from the lower timer to mouse 2. Now, since I want each timer to clear when the other one is pressed, I'm going to wire reset to the opposite key. So, I'm going to wire reset to mouse 2 on the first one, and reset to mouse 1 on the second one. This way, either way, only one timer is running, and the other is zero. Now basically what's happening here is the increment and decrement is receiving the values from the two timers, mouse 1 being increment, mouse 2 being decrement. And since the timers are exact, the increment and decrement is going up gradually, at the value of 0 0.5, multiplied by the timer values. When the decrement timer goes up, the value goes down, and vice versa. Once this is added to 4, it moves the bar. Now all we need to do is wire link from the hydraulic to the add gate to finish this off. Now let's set a turret. Place a turret on the end of the bar, and there you go. Now the simplest thing. All you need to do is wire fire from the turret to your key of choice. In my case, R. Okay, let's try this out. Motion okay. Now, let's raise and lower the bar. There we go. 
It raises and lowers gradually as I press mouse 1 or mouse 2, which pretty much sums up this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and as always, I hope this helped.